405 and the 10. Come on, smile. <laughs> okay, good morning. Uh, it's Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. This is Personnel Audits and Hiring Committee. I'm Tim McCosker. We'll get started with roll call. Councilmember Council McCosker. Here. Councilmember Padilla. Present. Councilmember Sotomayor Martinez. Here. Be present on the quorum, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, members. So we have five items on the agenda. Uh, I'm going to recommend after public comment that we take items three and four on consent, which would give us uh, items two and five for discussion. I think I'll take five first and we'll finish with two if it's all right with my members. We're going to continue item one. I apologize to uh, anyone who's here on item one. We're still waiting for another report to come in. That's on the important issue of wage theft. And so we'll have it on shortly. So I think now we're going to go to public comment. Um, I have, it looks like I have one person signed up for public comment, uh, unless I'm misreading this. Anyone here for public comment? But I don't see a name. What's it? Mrs. Prince. Yes, there you are. Thank you. I apologize for not having your name. It just didn't pop up on my screen. But you're very welcome. Can you let me know what you're speaking on? on item five. Okay, you have a, we have a minute, why don't you go ahead. Okay. Although, you know what, you can speak on item five when we get to item five. Okay. You wanna do that? Yes. Okay, let's do that. Okay, very good, let's do this. Um, I'll close public comment. And let's do um, uh, the consent agenda. I'm gonna recommend that we take three and four on the consent agenda and continue item number one. Is that right with my members? Okay, good. Let's go ahead and do roll call. Councilmember McCosker. No. Yes. Councilmember Padilla. Yes. Councilmember uh, Soto Martinez. Yes. Three items are approved. Thank you very much. We're going to jump to item five. And uh, even though it was just a matter of seconds, Mrs. Prince, why don't you come on up? Good morning. I'm good morning. Is your mic on? Oh, you, you wouldn't know. Is, is, can we turn on her mic? Thank you. Why don't you go ahead on it for a minute? I work for the Los Angeles Police Department Vehicle Warrant Section. Um, formerly, we are a call center within records and identification uh, by the name of VIPU, or most of them, most of us are known that way. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, we're requesting, um, we're requesting an evaluation to be uh, labeled as a call center. Um, we enter, we're the only division that enters stolen vehicles for all city of Los Angeles. Um, we're not labeled a call center and that's affecting our resources. Uh, we are a 24, 24 hour, sorry, 24 seven operation. Uh -huh. um, that this is affecting public safety and our officers out there. So it's uh, affecting officer safety and public safety at this time. Uh, right now we're operating on cell phones. We have maybe four operators on cell phones um, and we need critical aid for this critical unit. Um, let's see, sorry. It's okay, take your time. Um, the, I'm giving you two minutes, so go right ahead. The tentative agreement right now for MOU3 um, is listing only two of the three call centers for city of LA. Okay. And that's a problem. Uh, right now our staff, uh, is critical. Um, I'm sure all of, like all of said ballet, and I'm sorry, this is my first time here. Um, and we don't have adequate parking for our, our division employees. Uh, they're not able to remotely uh, work from home or anything like that. And uh, we're just requesting District 14 or District 14, uh, 15 to look into this or anybody to help. Uh, we were misrepresented by um, AFSCME, our union, uh, Local 3090. They still don't know what records and identification does, and we need critical help that can't wait five years. Thanks. Thank you. Magali, I'm going to ask that you give your information to Mr. Uh, Adam Acosta, and we'll follow up with you. Thank you very much. Any Thanks. other speakers on item five before we proceed with the presentation? Hearing none, then the chair is yours, Mr. Zabo. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Matt Zabo, City Administrative Officer. Let me just get situated here for a moment. Sure. 
make sure right. that this is okay. While he's getting situated, could you read the item into the record, Mr. Clerk? City Administrative Officer Report relative to the successor memorandum of understanding for Coalition of City Unions 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 34, 36, 37, 63, 64, 1, 19, 20, 21, 29, 30, 30, sorry, 31, 32, 61, and 35. Very good. Other than that, Okay. Right ahead. All right. Very good. Good morning. Um, and as you just heard in the introduction of the item, what we have before the committee today is a is four to five year contracts for just about every civilian employee uh, in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, we're going to walk through uh, an overview of the main uh, components of the uh, agreement, the proposed agreement. Um, the common provisions there, we, I will highlight some of the targeted increases for critical positions and high need positions, and then we'll uh, discuss the fiscal impact. So as, uh, as I said in the beginning, this, uh, what you have before you are uh, proposed MOUs for 28 civilian bargaining units. It is essentially um, all bargaining units, all civilians, uh, with the exception of three. So this covers 33,450 employees, uh, 22,633 full-time, 10,817 part-time. So as, as we are talking about the cost impact, let's, we need to keep in mind that we're talking about uh, essentially the entirety of the civilian workforce with these, uh, with these proposed MOUs. Um, in terms of the uh, representation, this includes uh, the Coalition of City Unions, the Engineers and Architects Association, the City Attorneys Units, the Fiscal and Policy Professionals Association, and the non-represented employees. Uh, we've been bargaining for uh, the better part of a year, and uh, the main issues uh, bargained across all units included, uh, of course, the contract term, which we'll uh, discuss in a moment, uh, base wages, minimum wage, uh, the uh, the minimum uh, hourly uh, rate that uh, any city employee, uh, full-time or part-time, would, would qualify for, uh, health care for intermittent workers, uh, paid parental leave, uh, which is currently provided at six weeks, and, uh, and sick leave. There's also, um, in the MOUs, there's also amendments to the personal leave policy, bilingual pay, uh, graveyard shift, uh, and some provisions on acting pay, union rights, and contracting. Uh, so in terms of the um, principal terms and base wage increases, uh, I'm gonna, I'll highlight the coalition units and then the engineers and architects have a slightly different structure. Uh, so we'll talk about those. Essentially, the, the other than engineers and architects, the other civilian units pretty much follow the, the same schedule uh, as the coalition. Uh, so when I'm talking about the coalition, I'll talk about, uh, I'm referring to the coalition and the non-EAA uh, units. So for the coalition, uh, we have bargained a five-year term that would begin uh, last December uh, 31st, 2023, and would uh, carry through December 23, 2028. Um, we have bargained and are recommending a 22% increase over five years. Uh, and uh, that would be uh, administered at the schedule that you see before you, starting with the first increase of 3% uh, retroactive to March 24th, 2024. Uh, for, the, for the EAA units, uh, we have, we're recommending a four-year term uh, beginning January 1, uh, 2024 through December 25, 2027. And because it is a four-year uh, term, the schedule is essentially the same as the coalition, just over four years. So we'll be, uh, we're recommending a 17% increase uh, over four years with the first increase retroactive to January 28, 2024. So the common provisions, uh, so these provisions apply to all of the uh, MOUs that are in front of you today. Uh, number one, we are uh, we have bargained and are recommending 
a $25 citywide minimum wage. So that is, uh, and to be clear, citywide meaning for all city employees. This is not citywide, citywide. But for, for any employee of the city, part-time or full-time, the minimum hourly rate uh, would uh, rise to $20 an hour uh, on uh, as of April 21st, 2024. And as on the schedule that you see before you would rise to $21.50 then $23 and ultimately $25 an hour by June 28th, 2026. This will impact over 4,000 uh, city employees, including about 3,200 uh, coalition employees that are currently um, working for the city but making less than $20 an hour. Uh, paid parental leave. Uh, this is currently a pilot program um, whereby uh, the uh, employee qualifies for six weeks of paid leave uh, following the uh, event. Um, uh, there are a number of events that would trigger uh, parental leave, uh, not just uh, a birth of, uh, from a mother. Um, we are we have agreed uh, or we have agreed to recommend that that uh, paid parental leave become a permanent uh, program and that it be extended from six weeks to 12 weeks. Uh, healthcare for intermittent workers. So currently, we provide healthcare for full-time. We provide healthcare for part-time. Uh, we do not provide healthcare benefit for intermittent workers. Those are workers that work hourly, less than half-time, uh, could work uh, anywhere from uh, a you know, couple dozen hours a year to 800. Uh, or more hours. Uh, if they're less than half time, they're considered intermittent workers. This would include uh, uh, employees, many employees at recreation parks, for example, that are seasonal workers. Uh, so we currently do not provide a healthcare benefit for these employees. What we have agreed to do is um, provide a, a prorated rate uh, at the single party coverage rate of, of Kaiser. So currently that's about $9.70 an hour. Uh, so we will not be adding that to their take-home pay. We will be setting that aside. We are still working out the details as to whether um, we provide it as a benefit that their, um, their labor organization provides, whether we uh, work out something where the city provides some sort of a prorated benefit. We're still working on, on, those, uh, on those details, but we have, what we've agreed to is the principle that there will be a health care allocation for every hour worked for every employee in the city at the single party coverage rate. Thank you. Uh, we are um, recommending that uh, excess sick leave be paid out at 100%. It is currently paid out at 50%. Uh, we will be monitoring this program and uh, we'll look in the successor agreement as to whether it continues. Uh, but there is some argument, and we have seen uh, evidence in other uh, bargaining units that have 100% sick leave payout, a reduction in the use of sick leave um, that is an overall benefit to the city and overall uh, lessens the pressure on overtime, et cetera. So we will be monitoring whether this has a similar effect, and in the successor agreement, we'll recommend to continue the program or not. Uh, some of the targeted uh, increases beyond the common issues. Uh, we did seek to address some of the issues where hiring and retention is most acute, uh, starting with uh, police service representatives. Those are 911 operators. Uh, so we, they currently have a retention pay stru uh, structure, as you see uh, on the left side of the, of the slide, starting at five years, increases at seven years to nine years. Um, we have uh, agreed to and we are recommending a, a much more robust retention structure to encourage uh, the 911 uh, operators, the, the PSRs, uh, to uh, extend their career and spend more time uh, as they get more training uh, uh, with the department. Um, so we would have a retention pay structure that would, be, be, that would begin in year six and would steadily increase uh, all the way up to year 29. Uh, we also looked at the veterinarian class series. Uh, this is an area where we are uh, simply not competitive. Uh, and we, this, uh, this is a uh, situation where I would refer to this as a, a resetting of the salary. So it is, 
it is a uh, an additional 20% increase, but we are setting the salary to a competitive rate so that we can uh, recruit and retain uh, veterinarians uh, both at animal services and at the zoo. Uh, another critical um, classification, cybersecurity analyst, the cybersecurity analyst series, uh, we are also making an adjustment uh, over and above the cost of living adjustments to uh, bring that classification uh, more competitive um, with uh, other uh, agencies and the private sector. Uh, we have had uh, significant issues in retaining accountants. And uh, given um, the salary structure of our uh, accountant class, um, it doesn't make sense to stay as an accountant. Um, and what we're seeing is many accountants are switching over to management analyst after a few years. And so we're having a, a difficult time retaining accountants. Every department needs accountants and experienced accountants in order to function properly. So we are adjusting those salaries upward up to 9% as well. Uh, we're also adding a targeted increase for in environmental compliance inspectors, uh, ECIs, that is um, the, uh, they are part of the Care and Care Plus operations. Uh, we did in a prior contract provide uh, incentive uh, pay for uh, the uh, refuse uh, collection operators. Um, and so we're providing a similar uh, increase for the environmental compliance inspectors. Uh, fiscal impact. So I will walk through this in, there are, there are uh, two ways to uh, consider the fiscal impact of these agreements. One is uh, when I'm referring to the annual cost of the MOUs, that is how much more on an annual basis will we be paying on payroll as a result of these increases. When I say cumulative, that is how much in total over the course of the, the five-year agreement or four-year agreement will the city pay out? Because obviously an increase on top of an increase in the following year you pay both of those increases. So the cumulative number will be larger. That represents the total amount uh, spent. So for the annual cost of the coalition MOUs over the five years, uh, that would uh, increase the base by $733 million for all funds. And for the general fund, it would increase the base by $435 million. Uh, for the EAA MOUs, uh, we would be increasing the base by $230 million uh, for all funds and for the general fund by $137 million. That would be over four years. For all units uh, that are before you today, it would increase the, the base by uh, just over $1 billion by fiscal 28-29, and uh, on the general fund side, $623 million. And then on the cumulative cost for all units, this is the total amount that would be paid out uh, over the, the next five years for all funds would be $3.5 billion. Uh, for the general fund, uh, 2.15 billion. Um, with that, I will uh, open it for questions. Thank you very much, appreciate it. I do have a few questions before I get to um, all members. So on the, on the um, healthcare for intermittent workers, which is you know, something of great value to us, something we really wanted to do, is it, is it likely that we're going to have different bargaining units will have, will have different processes or procedures for how this is implemented? Is that a possibility? Well, I don't know if, it, if I could say likely or unlikely. I, I, I would say our preference would be to have a consistent, a consistent program. Yeah. Uh, the, challenge, the challenge, of course, um, that we are committed to resolve is when you're talking about um, uh, purchasing health care, if you have a seasonal worker that works 24 hours um, and or a, a worker that's working just shy of half time, uh, you're, it's, there's going to be a challenge in, uh, in purchasing the same level of health care. So um, one of, as I said, one of, the, uh, one of the options would be to provide that um, to a third party to provide health care. Uh, could be their, uh, the unit that represents them. 
uh, we we do that in certain areas. Certainly, we do that to the uh, at the airport. Mm -hmm. The airport provides um, a um, contribution to the union healthcare fund, uh, the trust fund. Um, that is something that we could explore, or we could explore other um, other ways in which uh, we would provide healthcare. So we're still working that out. So it's subject of further bargaining after the adoption, and then it'll be implemented through. Um, a side letter or something? It some would sort? be implemented. Uh, we would bring that back through EERC and 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 ultimately through council. Um, the um, this the MOUs before you. What they trigger is the set aside of that. What is currently nine dollars and seventy cents an hour. So, if it even if it takes us, you know, three months, six months, that benefit will be set aside. So we'll be um, we'll have that accumulated fund to provide that health care when the um, the policy is implemented. Great, thank you. Um, I'll just do a few questions on different subjects, then I'll turn it over to the members. Is that right? I have a few questions. Okay, but I'll go through some questions I'll of different subject matters. Um, on the PSRs, uh, the uh, I appreciate the, um, uh, the retention pay and the bump in retention pay. How is the we did, what did we do to the sort of the opening salaries for the recruitment? I mean, I get retention, but what are we doing about recruitment? Um, I'm going to ask the person who bargained this. To oh, great. Thank you. Issue. Thank you. And I know that we're doing well on recruitment, at least the, we have the, the two classes that are pending. But what are we doing on the recruitment? Did we bump up starting salaries? Uh, the department. I think department your mic is not on. Thank you. Angela Brown with Employee Relations Division. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Um, AFSCME requested to um, really work on a agreement for their current mm -hmm. PSRs. Mm -hmm. They shared that they are working with the personnel department as far as their, rec uh, their recruitment efforts. And during um, our bargaining, they wanted to focus on a robust schedule for their current PSRs. So we stayed within the confines of bargaining, of course, responding to the what was across the table from us, and we feel we feel pretty good about being able to recruit. Yes, it's good. That's good. Thank you. Um, I'm going to jump to the vets. So the vets is uh, just a reset across the board, every level of twenty percent. Oh, yes. Go. You have vets too. I do. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. Uh, I noticed in some of the c categories, like in cybersecurity and account uh, series classes, we have this range, you know, but um, in the vets, we don't have a range. It was just across the board a bump of 20%? Yes, across the, the series. And um, is that a, just a reflection of we were just, you know, way out of step, so that wasn't necessarily a recruitment versus retention, and we just were sort of off step across the board? Correct. Wow. That's a big, that's a big... A big off the step. Um, I'm going to ask some questions about the costs, but I think I'll turn it over to the members, uh, my colleagues. Colleague? You ready? Okay. Um, I have a question about the, um, you called it a pilot, the paid parental leave. I was just curious, is that something that's offered to both parents? It is. So uh, it would, and that's why I said um, the event. So it would be, it could be the birthing mother, it could be uh, the father, it could be um, an adoption situation, it would be offered to both parents, so they would both qualify for the 12 weeks. Okay, great. That was actually my next question. Does this also uh, apply for adoption? Correct, yes. Very good. Um, okay. I do just something about vets. Um, I had heard that we have a national shortage of veterinarians in this country, and that's why it's part of why it's so competitive and hard to purchase, to purchase, to, to find them. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm curious, it's just more like a, a food for thought, is where do you plan to recruit and are we sending the job descriptions over to, like UC Merced, who is producing veterinarians? Yes, both departments, uh, the zoo and animal services, are actively recruiting in the entire veterinarian series with a number of universities, as you mentioned as well as any other uh, avenues that they have. Their general managers are actively doing that. Um, how, how big is the shortage? Like, how many are we looking for? I don't have that number. OK, very good. And then I had also heard, um, it looks like you guys came with us with some 
better news related to the um, operators. Um, I had heard that it was a very hard test to take. So I'm curious, um, are you doing something to kind of help support, um, get folks to be able to pass such a difficult test if it's working as an obstacle for recruitment? Which operators are we? 911 operators. Are they working? Could you repeat the question? I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I had heard that it's a very difficult test, probably one of the more difficult ones to take. So I'm curious, is there anything happening related to uh, supporting folks to better prep for it? If it's an obstacle for recruitment? The actual exam didn't come up during negotiations or the or how difficult the exam was didn't come up. But that is something that we can follow up on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so those are my questions. Um, and then just a little, uh, just a comment that I've been wanting to say for um, housekeeping. There's a lot of paper and a lot of ink. <laughs> if we can uh, use less blue, and I'm okay with two slides a page. I just got to put that out there. Fair enough. Yes. A lot of blue. It is, it, 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 it is a lot. It is a lot of blue. Um, it looks good on the screen. There, but yes, a lot of red team. too. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of blue and a lot of red. Um, normal in normal circumstances. So I did ask the question whether we were going to be downstairs or upstairs. I would normally not print. Um, we would normally have it on the screen, but since there's not really any good screens here, but uh, noted and. Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll use different shades, your lighter team, shades next your time. Your team must be buying ink all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, colleague, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Uh, well, to me, the most important question is, have these been ratified by the respective unions? All they've, they've, they've all been ratified, yes. Okay. So this would, be, this would be the final action. We would move to implementation as soon as council adopts. Great. Well, I want to say congratulations to all the different folks from the union here ratifying your contract. I know that's... Democratic process, you got to get folks involved, you got to create the little summaries and go through them step by step and they have to vote. And so I'm very happy they've been ratified. Um, I, I have a couple questions. Uh, the, the, going back to the PSRs, the, the change in the retention bonus, do we do a similar analysis uh, like we did with the LAPDs, like where where the drop-off was happening on the retention so that it, that it corresponds with sort of the need? We did. And we noticed between the nine year and 13 year. Okay. That was where we saw. That's where the, that's where the people were yeah. leaving. Okay. All right. I, I had a similar question about the, the hiring. So I'm glad to hear people are working with, uh, with the personnel department as well. Um, especially because that's the first, that's the first step in anything, right? And uh, an armed response is, is important to get mm -hmm. that piece uh, uh, correct. Uh, you know, getting them trained, supported, and that the morale is good, I think is, is, is the first step. So I'm happy to hear that uh, this was successful. Um, do you think for the accountants, do you think that's enough? Uh, I've, I've heard a lot of, uh, from different departments, the inability to hire accountants. Yeah, we'll we'll have to. I mean, the the goal with the with the account adjustment uh, was to make them more competitive with the management analyst series. Um, Stephanie, you can address it. Oh, your mic. You just press that button. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie Ozawa uh, from the CAO's office. Uh, yeah, the main thing that we try to do a lot of times when we make salary adjustments, it's kind of an incremental process where we can't necessarily do everything at once. So we targeted that one issue of trying to have, you know, avoid having the accountants move, you know, from the accounting series and staying in that and doing the accounting work that the city needs and transitioning over to the management analysts. So what we did is in, for the accountants that are considering changing to that management analyst series, we had the senior accountant we set those salaries to match, so there's not going to be a loss by staying in the accounting series. Okay. But do you think that the raise is, is enough to, to address the issue? I mean, I think it's a step in the right direction. Okay. It'll be, you know, time will tell. Okay. Well, but we'll, have to, we'll have to assess that. I mean, this is the first time we've, we've moved to equalize the salaries. If there are other issues that um, are affecting uh, retention, we'll, we'll monitor that. And that's one of the benefits, by the way, of a of a longer term contract 
is that we'll be able to see what's happening and actually get some real data and, and come back. And if there are uh, needs um, to make additional adjustments over the term uh, of, of the contract, that is something that, um, that we're very, uh, very open to doing uh, if, there's, if the recruiting issues uh, persist. Thank you. And um, putting the the healthcare for intermittent workers, uh, it, did is there was there any timeline set on finalizing that point? Uh, I, I hate to get what happened last time with the specials and then you know things being left out with no well different versions, right? But ultimately, that caused a lot of tension, and I could see this one having the potential for that as well. Right. So there, there wasn't a, a hard timeline set. There is not a, a, a there's not a side letter that that sets those parameters. Um, all I can say is that through the course of bargaining, um, from really the very beginning, there was um, there was genuine interest and commitment on both sides, management and labor, to come uh, to a solution, uh, a resolution on this item. Uh, so the issue is not. Um, are we going to do it, or at what level we're going to do it? We agree that there should be a, a a prorated benefit that is that covers the full cost of a single party of single party healthcare. It's just the matter of how that gets implemented, and it is complicated, and there are pitfalls and and other issues that we need to work out. There's no timeline, but there's a shared commitment to get this done. Right. Yeah. No. And. and I well, I'm glad that there's a commitment to it, and I mean the money's on the table, right? It's yeah. just a question of where where it goes. Uh, this could be a a sticky one because I've dealt with bargaining for workers that are intermittent, and oftentimes they don't do you know their number of hours to qualify, and you know a city this big is going to have so many different versions of that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's my only questions. Uh, since since but since Councilmember Padilla put her housekeeping items out there. Mm. The, the staple on the right side on the top okay. is just, uh, you know, <laughs> anyway. So, I, I, so that is an issue. That is <laughs> an issue. You can, you can take that up with Xerox because they, there is not a functionality to put a staple on the left side if it's, if it's a. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't get the fancy binder like the chair here. We, yeah. you know, I, I got the, the right hand staple. You know, just, okay. it's, I'm just, it's a joke. It's a joke, but, but it, it's, it's a thing I've noticed. I will say mine's double-sided, though. Oh, okay. saving paper. Yeah, Look at that. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate the work you're doing on this. I know it's so many unions, so many folks, but uh, I'm glad we're folks ratified and we're we're close to the finish line. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I do have a couple more questions. If you could stay mm -hmm. though for a minute, uh, but uh, the chair of the coalition, uh, Mr. Steve Kothroth, is here um, and wanted to say a few words. Thank you, Chair. Appreciate uh, you taking me a little bit out of order. Uh, Los Angeles traffic is always fun. Uh, my name is Steve Kofroth. I am the interim director of research and bargaining at SAIU Local 721. I'm also the chair of the LA City Coalition of Unions. Together with AFSME, Building Trades, Operating Engineers, Layuna, and Teamsters, we represent 24,000 civilian workers in the city. We come today to express our gratitude uh, to the city. We worked with the mayor's office, the CAO's office, the controller's office, who apparently employs magicians like Daniel Kwok and Sunny Lee. Uh, along with our various bargaining teams, we've worked diligently over the last couple of months to bring these agreements forward. We strongly urge you to adopt the tenant agreements before you. They are a good deal for all parties. It invests in our workforce, fortifies our city, and it's exactly what we need right now. This deal reflects the reality that we're in. Uh, prior budgets had a wishful notion uh, that missed an important point. You need actual workers and budget authorities to provide the actual services. And this deal makes that wish a reality. And we see it as significantly improving city services. In fact, the prospect of this new deal has already produced 800 additional new employees in the last couple of months. And there are still a couple of thousand positions that will be prioritized for hiring. We don't back down when we have challenges. We have always met them head on with hard work and resilience and with a plan to be the shining stage of the world. And this deal is the crux of that plan. Your approval means respecting and retaining employees who have 
faithfully serve the city through many trials. Your approval means lifting up the most vulnerable workers, giving them a chance to afford the outrageous cost of housing, health care, and more. Your approval means bringing in new workers who will fill service budget gaps, who will also help uh, relieve and rescue uh, overburdened staff, and continue our proud traditions. And ultimately, your approval means showing that we're serious about delivering the services that the community needs. We uh, are proud of this deal, and we stand with the CAO's office in recommending its approval and urge you to do the same. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, a couple more questions before we call the question. Um, I do want to highlight the reference before we get to this slide. Thank you for putting that up. The highlight. Uh, the reference to contracting out of services. Common to all of the agreements, we're removing a reference to 1022. Could you just unpack that for us for a second? Uh, yeah, let me have, um, Paul, do you want to address that? Paul Gerard, Office of the CAO. We typically uh, distribute uh, the intent to contract only around 1022. Uh -huh. And so this would just broaden it to any contract that is going to be let by a department. So any contract let by a department now will follow the, the process we've used for 1022 for contracting out of services. So this is basically put, create more notice and more, and more um, eyes and consideration on the issue of contracting out services. The intent is to increase awareness of, of the city's um, interest in contracting. I ask particularly because you know, as we head into these contracts and um, as we head into the next budget year, the concern with eliminating vacant positions is that we will do more contracting out of services. And I want to make sure that we're not doing anything to impair the labor management relationship and the need for us to, you know, notify on potential contracting out and to adopt the findings and to only contract out pursuant to charter provisions. So the elimination of the reference is actually not to diminish that conversation, it's actually to expand that conversation. Yes. Thank you, that was my question mm -hmm. on that issue. On this, I just wanna get a real quick question. This is the annual cost for all units and it rolls up, not cumulatively, but it rolls up annually to $1 billion over a, a one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, six or seven year span. What is a typical growth in our budget? Is this going to exceed what we expect to be um, a typical growth? I realize it's a very loaded question. Sure. Uh, for on the on the on the general fund side, um, that would be. Um, I, I'm just looking at. You know, that would represent less than a ten percent growth. Uh, over uh, over five years, um, our twenty year general fund average is um, between two and a half and uh, three and a half percent a year. Um, and again, that I, I, that is a twenty year average. So, um, for example, I expect that when you see the mayor's proposed budget, the general fund growth will be uh, significantly lower than our twenty year average, significantly lower. Mm -hmm. um, and so over over five years, using our 20-year average, our, our general fund growth would exceed the increase in the general fund annual obligation. And this does not include uh, sworn? This does not include sworn. No, sworn you would add, on, using that same metric, you would add that 384 million. And this, is, this also does not include a sworn fire, which will be forthcoming. Mm -hmm. uh, their contract expires at the end of this year. Thank you, thank you. Colleagues, any other questions before we call the question? Hearing none, Mr. Clerk, can you call the question? Uh, Councilmember McCosker. Yes. Councilmember Padilla. Yes. Councilmember Soto Martinez. Yes. Item is approved. Congratulations, thank you very much for all your hard work. To our labor partners, thank you very much for all of your hard work and dedication to this important issue. But as as Lee Corso says on, uh, on Saturday mornings, not so fast, it has to go to council. <laughs> Thank you very much. We will move then to um, our other item of business, uh, item uh, number two. 
And I believe, I believe we are joined by one of our council colleagues. Um, clerk, why don't you call item two into the, into the um, record? And I will see if our council colleague, um, Marquise Harris Dawson would like to speak. I know he was here a moment ago. Personnel department report relative to the implementation benchmarks and hiring goals for the targeted local hiring and strategic workforce development task force. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're joined by the personnel department and by, and we have the CAO here. And um, if the council member comes, we will give him a chance to speak as the, one of the greatest driving forces of this terrific program is our colleague, Marquise Harris Dawson. So go right ahead. Good morning, council members. Uh, my name is Louis Fernandez with the personnel department. I'm joined today by Vince Cordero, also with the personnel department. Uh, during the reporting period from February 1st, 2024 through February 29th, 2024, a total of 18 hires were made from the 12 classifications through the TLH program. Uh, while there are 12 hires made through the traditional civil service process, this equates to 60% of hires made in this reporting period coming through the TLH program. Uh, the most widely used classification continues to be office trainee with nine hires, followed by vocational worker gardener caretaker with four hires and vocational worker custodian and vocational worker warehouse and tool room worker with two hires each. Uh, the top user departments during this period were recreation and parks with four hires, police and general services with three hires and airports and LA sanitation with two hires each. Um, also during this reporting period, a total of 31 hires were made from the nine bridge to jobs classifications um, while there were zero hires made through the traditional service, civil service process. This equates to 100% of hires made in this reporting period coming through the Bridge to Jobs program. The classifications used during this reporting period through Bridge were electrical craft helper with 11 hires, accounting clerk with seven hires, customer service specialist with six hires, communications information uh, representative with four hires, and cement finisher worker with three hires. Um, the user departments during this period uh, for Bridge to Jobs were Public Works Street Lighting with 14 hires, Finance with six hires, City Clerk with five hires, LA Sanitation with four hires, and Harbor and Library with one hire each. Um, the Target Local Hire Program currently has 113 active referral requests with approximately nine pending offers, and the Bridge, uh, Bridge to Jobs Program currently has 34 active referral requests with approximately 15 pending offers. Um, so that'll conclude our presentation. Happy to answer any question. Thank you very much. Uh, colleague, would, are you here to observe or would like to speak? Observe. Thank you. So I want to I, I, I want to say again for the record, I think you're outside of the room. One of the this is a terrific program. We keep it on our agenda very regularly, and nobody has been more instrumental in moving this forward than. Councilmember Marquise Harris Dawson. Really appreciative of all your efforts on TLH and on bridges. And this is something that we keep at the forefront. My first question um, uh, is going to be uh, as we look at uh, the budget process and the prospect, and I will only say prospect, of, of eliminating vacant positions. One of my great concerns is that until we know the classifications that are proposed to be eliminated, we don't know the effect on TLH and bridges. Uh, can you just give me some observations on how you will be tracking this as a personnel department and working with the CAO's office, working with the council, working with the mayor to make sure that we don't put ourselves in a position where we're, you know, unduly balancing the budget on the backs of these opportunities. So go right ahead. I think I signaled how I want this to come out, but go right, right ahead. <laughs> Thank you, council member. Uh, Vince Cordero, the personnel department. So we will be tracking and working with the CEO. Um, just to give you some um, recent stats since the PCH process was in place, and this might give us a preview of what to expect, we've had uh, 16 referral requests since the PCH process was in place to fill 38 vacancies. As, and we've had uh, at least one for bridge. Um, we do expect these to continue to come in. We'll continue to track these um, mm -hmm. items as well as present this at future PAW committees. Mm -hmm. So will we also be um, making sure that we are, you know, focusing on those departments uh, that will have, that are likely to be less impacted 
uh, by um, budget tightening, you know, DWP, airport, harbor, other enterprise funds, and making sure that we're focused there. And again, I don't want to make that our only focus, but making sure that we continue to press TLH and bridge in those uh, opportunity areas. Yes, and as a matter of fact, we've um, actually been meeting with the airport to do a job hiring event uh, specifically for the TLH Bridge to Jobs yeah. programs in which uh, we plan to fill many of their vacancies in these classifications. I will tell you that the um, the port uh, just, and I, obviously I tracked that one more carefully than any of those departments, the port just put out its preliminary budget uh, criteria, its framework I'll say, and uh, they are significantly increasing their um, maintenance, ground keep, groundskeepers, um, uh, other sort of service areas of their personnel resolution uh, that would be ideal for us, for TLH and for bridges. And they're doing that for a good reason. They're increasing the, the amount of you know, property that they have to maintain and they're making a commitment to actually maintain the property they have. And so I'm just going to ask you to really focus at the port. Will do. Thanks. Colleagues, other questions? No question? Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you again for the, the report. Uh, it's always good to be here every single month and, and look at the progress that we've been making. Um, one thing that we've we've talked a lot about is doing that, that one day fair where people come in and they come out with a job, right? Um, and I know there's been different iterations of it, and I just want to remind folks that I believe we said by July we would get that done, so that we would have the structure, everything ready, where from people come in and they walk out with a job, regardless of whether they've gone through the work source centers or any of that, right? So do, uh, any progress on, on that? Yeah, we've um, convened a subcommittee of the TLH Working Group to look at this specific request. Um, we recently had a recommendation for a new job readiness assessment tool, which will allow us to do one of the items in which it's been difficult to roll out at these events in the sense to get individuals uh, signed up for the TLH program and Bridge to Jobs program on site. Um, with this new tool, we will be able to do that as well as um, do an orientation. So um, at this point, it looks like we're going to be able to have um, enrollment into the programs at these events. Um, when it comes to the hiring uh, of aspect of it, we're still trying to figure that piece out, but we will be coming back here with um, a little bit more detail on that tool, the job readiness, which will be a game changer for us. Uh, we're just working through some things with our um, stakeholders, which would be the work source centers and EWDD to make sure that we can roll out this tool in a, a you know an effective manner for everyone. Um, so once we get that squared away, we will be coming back here about what we can and can't do based on recommendations from the TLH working group. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. I'm happy to hear that we're moving along. I have more questions, but I think I'll, I'll ask them offline because uh, I have some meetings coming up that could help nudge you in the right direction. Yeah, but thank, thank you. you so much. I, I do have another quick one. You could tell me now if you know, or you could also you know, get back to us and think about this for this time or next time. So it looks like um, bridges jumped 100%, and it looks like it's almost um, most of that is attributable to electrical craft helper. Uh, what what do you what do you attribute that to? I realize it's a very small set, so maybe these jumps, you know, have less meaning until we look back over a long period of time. But tell me about why we did so well with bridge and less well with TLH. Um, in, in in the sense, I and I could just speak generally to this. Yeah. Um, typically, if there's an eligible list established for any of the classifications. Um, Departments will have the choice to use the civil service eligible list to fill the vacancies or the TLH or bridge to job process. Um, it, it tends to ebb and flow uh, with the percentages yeah. um, depending on departments, um, you know, usage of those lists. So in, in this particular month, um, there was uh, quite a bit usage of the ECH classification by, I believe it was street right. Sanitation. Oh, sanitation this yeah. particular time. Yeah. I'm sorry, street lighting. I apologize. Okay, it was street lighting. Yes, so street lighting, and uh, that, that got us to 100%. But with uh, TLH, um, there was a usage of the civil service list, which brought the percentage down versus. Um, I see. So yeah. it's a matter of what lists available and what, what, what they're. 
what it, it matters what what's available what's available at the time and, and so you'll jump on the list that you have because this was our window right here when we announced pch this was and and tlh and bridges was not going to be as restricted this was the window to really jump yeah and, and we, now we definitely saw a bridge for sure yeah and now the window changes a little bit and the window will change with the budget and so we have to stay focused as a council on making sure we keep, keep these opportunities open, but then you have to stay focused as implementers to make sure that we, if we open the door for you in the budget, that you use it. Because this is the place, especially if you're strapped, you want to bring people in at the beginning and build a, build a long, healthy career for folks. Uh, so this is a, um, a note and file, once again. And I will, and if there's no other questions, I will call the question. Councilmember McCosker. Yes. Councilmember Padilla. Yes. Councilmember Soto Martinez. Yes. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. We'll see you at the next report. Uh, Mr. Clerk, is there anything else in front of us? That's usually an easy no, there isn't. The desk is cleared. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. Thanks very much, everybody, for a very full agenda.